this lesson, we'll be taking a look at the flattened Photoshop files that will be used in After Effects to rig Rocket Randy. Before we actually jump into After Effects, I want to review the two finished files that I'll be working with. I have two different compositions here, and one is the full body pieces, so the full limbs, full torso, which we discussed earlier, and these will be bent using the puppet tool. And the other includes pieces that are segmented. And these pieces, as we demonstrated earlier, were, were considered how they would rotate before they were actually segmented. With a puppet that's being used for the puppet tool, the main things that you need to consider before exporting your file is that all of your layers are as flat as possible. It's really important that you have all the folders and everything dealt with and cleared out as much as possible. Whenever you have a folder, it, what it does is it creates a nested composition in After Effects. It can be a little bit tricky to work with. One way that does work with folders is if you're going to have multiple heads, for instance, and you want to have a front, back, side, and all the different ones, you could put them all into the same folder. But uh, So I typically try to clean things up as much as possible and really keep as few pieces as I can and few extra layers. But what I do highly recommend is always saving an alternate file before you flatten them out. Make sure everything's flat, everything's isolated in its own layer. I don't have anything weird floating around. One way you can check if you have artifacts floating around is to turn your create a background. So you just create a solid color and you can create a background that's any color you want. And it can be really helpful in finding out if you have any extra bits that are floating around that you don't want. And I don't currently see any. Once I've uh, figured all that and gotten rid of anything I don't need, you can delete this. Then what I do is I save a new file, and this file actually goes into an After Effects folder. So I always create a new After Effects folder, so I have this folder called After Effects, because every project will have a folder for After Effects, a folder for Premiere once I start moving into the editing, and a folder for Pro Tools, and a folder for Maya. So I, I usually separate them by the program type. Really, it's up to you how you do this, but it's really important that you do separate them, because these here are my core files. And these are the files that I have to fall back on if I mess something up or I need to go back and create a new piece. I want to keep those. And you can create a new folder for those called Archive or Originals or whatever you want. But in the After Effects folder, I have a Photoshop folder. It's a PSD. And this is where all my layered files will go. And if I'm dealing with a really complicated scene, what I'll do is I would create a PSD and then perhaps create a new folder. And this one would be called rocket randy for instance and this would just be the characters folder and then i would have another folder called backgrounds depending on how many scenes there were maybe there's like scene one two three four and five this would be you know backgrounds scene zero one or on top of that method you could create folders that are if they're based on shot numbers because you've done an animatic you have shot zero zero one background scene one goes in there and rocket there's a set of rocket randy that's specific to shot one so then you have it really separated up and i find it really important if you have your shots numbered which i highly suggest when you're doing an animatic to number the shots this is a great way to work and i even make duplicates of the puppets just if i have if i'm using this guy all over the place it's better to have duplicates than to accidentally corrupt the file or lose it and then i'll even have duplicates in this with the multiple files that I might have a number of GG flats in there. And if you flatten the file properly, it typically won't take up too much disk space. So organization at this part of the game is I think some of the most important things to consider. If you do not consider them, you could lose files, you could misplace things and have no way to get back to what you've done. And it's also really hard if you've taken a break or the project's changed to go back and find what you did. This helps organize it right off the bat. So just try to organize that as much as possible. And another thing to consider is the fact that you will probably need to add additional pieces. I don't expect that this will be all of the puppet pieces that I'll need. I'll probably be adding to them. Now, what I've found in the past is actually adding additional layers to the Photoshop file is not advisable. Usually I create a new project and we'll just add the layers to that. So if I'm to start creating a whole bunch of different heads, I'll create a head comp PSD file that I actually work in and add heads to. Because after you've created this character sheet, if you start adding layers, and I found if you add a layer, let's say in the middle here, and you create a new piece, sometimes what happens is After Effects loses track of all the layers, and then you have to go back and redefine each layer in After Effects and source them back one by one. And this can be a nightmare if you have a lot of different layers you're working with. So if you've already wrapped up and finished a character, for instance, and you realize you need new heads and hands and everything like that, 
you want to do that in a separate composition and then import them later. This is just your foundation and expect this to change. I already know based on what I've done and it's a concept art I've developed. I'm probably going to need a three-quarter back puppet of this character. I'm probably going to need a three-quarter front head that's looking up and maybe looking down. And I'm definitely going to need a whole bunch of different hands. So this is really just the beginning of this puppet. But again, the key is that everything's flat. Everything's named appropriately. If you look at what I've got here, I've got add prefix on everything. So side rocket engine 2A, side rocket engine 2B. And I try to keep this consistent. And this really does help in the long run when you start dealing with lots of different pieces. So I try to name everything as consistently as possible. And I try to keep everything fairly well organized. This doesn't mean I always get it right. Sometimes I change my naming conventions a little bit or I forget how I was naming something and I'll have to go back in in After Effects and re -cor just correct those names. But you really want to try to be as organized as possible out the gate. Make sure everything you're working with, if you're dealing with, if you have front eyes and if you have side eyes and eyes closed, you really want to keep those prefixes in there. And I recommend not using spaces and using underscores. Spaces can be confusing when you're actually dealing with code and it can be really hard to find if you've done two spaces by accident. Um, so if you're just using underscores, you can clearly see if you've done, done too many underscores because um, can, it can be a real nightmare to find why something's not working or it can't identify a variable and it's because you've put two spaces instead of one. Then we have these CG limb segments that I've done. And these I didn't really name specifically. I Technically, I probably should have named them segmented, like given them a prefix of, of RRSEQ or something. But I didn't do that. I was a little bit lazy with that, and I just didn't think of it till later. So these actually aren't prefixed appropriately, which may end up being a problem down the road. And I wanted to just touch on one last thing before I wrap up this lesson, is dealing with the torso. Now the torso, I didn't do, with the segmented torsos, I didn't do a perfect overlay technique with the circular torso like I demonstrated in one of the earlier lessons. The torso, let's just find side torso here. There we go, side torso one and side torso two. All I really did is I duplicated the, the torso. Let's just put this down to 50%. And you can see where it's overlapping. It's not a perfect circle. When it was a perfect circle, it actually didn't bend very nicely. The key of getting figuring out a torso is figuring out where you want your rotation to be. And it can be really, really quite tricky because the, the torso, isn't, it doesn't actually bend like this ever. You, there's all, actually many multiple bends, and for the character, I'm more planning on focusing on the um, character's body torso being a puppet tool torso. But for the sake of clarity and for the sake of touching on many different techniques, I decided to have a segmented version. And torsos are really, really tricky to work with when you're dealing with segmented puppets, unless you design them specifically. And I usually recommend if you're going to do a torso that you're bending to have at least three pieces, having one in the bottom, one in the middle, and one in the top. I was able to hide a lot of the segmentation with the actual belt and the straps on the character. Essentially, all I did is I took the original. So you can see as I turn this on and off, all I did was duplicate the original layer and cut it off and then just get the paper put in here underneath. But it took a bit of experimentation to find where a good point of rotation was. And as you can see, it really does break quite easily. And you have, to, you have to decide where you're going to pivot from and what creates the most convincing effect. But it's not really designed for that. Like for a character that I'm actually going to do a torso break like this, I probably wouldn't design buttons to look like this. Unless, unless you actually wanted it to, to really play up the segmentation, which is completely valid. But if you do something like a button like strip like this, you can really see where it's breaking and you really do lose the illusion. So it's typically better to have none of this and just one solid shirt would work a lot better. But in the final version of the project, we're either going to embrace the fact that he is paper cut out and it looks kind of funny, or what I'm going to do is really focus on using the puppet tool version of the actual torso, which if we go over here, works. torsos work really nicely with the puppet tool. Let's do a puppet warp on this guy right here, and I'll just demonstrate. Just done some funny shift on it, but that's okay. So you can see I can get some really nice bends in that torso, and it doesn't damage the, the actual drawing in any way. It maintains all the form and all the pieces, and it has a much more believable look to it.
that's probably the route we're going to take. But to start with everything, we're going to create a segmented version because it requires no coding whatsoever, no plugins, no external applications, nothing like that. So it's the cleanest way to address this guy. With all of that said, once you have these two separate files made, and like I said, I made a separate segmented version and a non-segmented version, they could technically be put into the same composition, but I wanted to keep things clean just for the sake of demonstration. And what was the last thing? I think that's about it for prepping the files. Really just make sure everything's cleaned up as much as possible. Make sure that all your layers are separated. Sometimes it's good to put on the actual show transform controls and move up and down through the layers and just actually check and make sure that all your pieces are nicely separated. Uh, make sure everything's really clean. If you have layer effects, you're using layer effects, they can be really awesome, but they can also really slow down the processor. If you are doing layer effects, I kind of recommend bringing them in later. So let's say, for instance, you have a, layer, a particular layer effect that you want to put on all of this, like the paper layer effect that we we're talking about. Create the layer effect, do all your adjustments on one layer, on one piece, and save that piece for later because what you're going to do is you'll keep those you'll keep that effect on there but it won't be on everything because if it's on everything what starts happening as soon as you start doing all your movements and animation everything starts chugging and you have to go through the layers and actually shut off the layer effect so i recommend keeping this off to the side and when you're done you just copy that layer style and you paste it on every other layer after the fact i think that's actually it for prepping the file Okay, before we move on, I wanted to just touch on something really quickly for anyone that's trying to use these lessons to actually get your own work finished right now. What I wanted to do is just go in another project that I'm currently working on, uh, which is a character called Marcel Guillaume. And this character is a much more complicated character than what Rocket Randy is in many ways. He's also very simple in other ways. With this character, I do actually have multiple hands. And with this, I actually just photographed my own hands to put him together. And this is the file that I'm using in After Effects to create this character. So you can see how it's separated up. I did end up putting the hands in separate folders and then just re resizing the compositions in After Effects because I had so many hands. Eventually, Rocket Randy will have this many hands as well. And we'll just do that later we'll create separate comps that actually house these hands and then import them into into after effects but for so let's just turn these hands off so i have these hands and they're separated into separate layers here into separate folders what i really wanted to demonstrate here was the eye you know there's a lot of different ways to approach blinking eyes but it really depends on your character this character is quite realistic in a way and but it doesn't really embrace the cutout technique and it it does end up being quite a quite an extra amount of work but with this character i just drew separate eyes so i created a folder with all the different eye layers that you can do here and you can see the cycle of his blink and then i have some eyes looking down here and that that's if the eyes look down and then I, ha I ended up actually having to make another set for when the eyes looked up and it was called eye fix so you can see how I did this instead of adding layers into this existing composition I created a new composition in Photoshop and created the eyes all the different eye layers again and this allowed me to keep adding to it so here you'll see that I have all the different blink layers. Um, and they're really, they're just done using a multiply pass. So this is them looking down. And then I had new eyes that I used. Let's put that to 100%. And that's the eyes looking up. And there was just two frames that I actually added there. And on this character, I have the ear separate because the ear helps create a sense of dimension. So I needed it to float off the head a little bit. And then I have a displacement map which uses, utilizes Freeform Pro to actually create depth in the head. And then we have the head here. And we have something that I was trying, and which actually works pretty well for really, really complex things, is wrinkles. Now, wrinkles, these wrinkles are called up using opacity channels, so they get masked off and assigned to different quadrants of the face, for instance. So like this here gets assigned to this this fold of skin here these guys get put here and depending on different movements of null objects they become more or less opaque so it creates the illusion that the skin is, skin is actually folding then i have the teeth top teeth bottom the tongue the collar back 
and then just the rest of all the different layers that end up being used in that particular project to put the character together. But you can see this is another way of organizing things. And again, it's named fairly clearly. I Because I only have one puppet, it wasn't necessary to put a prefix on this, but if I had multiple characters or multiple pieces, I would either add a prefix to the beginning or something at the end here where I have the hand right and hand left. All right, so with all of that said, I think it's time to move into Rocket Randy in After Effects and show you how to start setting anchor points and preparing this file for rigging. If you like what ED Films is doing and want to stay up to date on the latest developments and tutorials, please show your support by liking us on Facebook.